Hello and welcome back to episode 17 of the Welsh Premiership podcast. Today we're joined by Pontypridd club captain and a Premiership stalwart in David Lockyer. David, how are you? Yeah, all good, thanks. Uh, you played at Ponty for 15 years altogether now. How much does the club mean to you? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's been a massive part of my life. Um, it's, it's, it's been everything really since probably when I went down there to join the academy at 15. Um, it was just that was the only club I ever wanted to play for. Play for and um, yeah, it's been brilliant. It's, like I said, it's a massive part of my life. and. For my family, really, they, they've they've got involved in it. My mother, and father, big Ponty supporters, and and other kids that kids love Ponty. So, yeah, it's been massive, and it has it has been a big part of my life. And I know you say like about politics first. Probably being honest here, probably I put Ponty in front in front of my family a lot of times. Which sometimes I have to like to be to be as successful as I have, and to be captain, you've got to try and make those sacrifices and that stuff. I've definitely done over the years, but. It's all been worth it, and um, I'd, I'd love my time, don't I? Uh, yeah, as a team, you finished in fifth place last season. What do you make of the season? Yeah, well, disappointing, really, but um, we're just not consistent enough. We, it's like people say, yeah, Ponty play good rugby, and um, it's also cracking tries, but it's just, we just made, made so many errors last year, um, and just games we should be winning. We, we were losing and um, we just wasn't good enough last year and we just couldn't get away with it. the teams. Anyone could beat anyone on a day. And um, we, do, we, we do well against the top teams and we lost a lot of games to the teams lower than us and um, we just wasn't good enough last year. And obviously no one knows when next season will start now, but what are your ambitions for next season? As you said, you were a bit inconsistent last year, but obviously you have got a lot of talent in the squad. So, what are your aims and ambitions for next season? Same as every season. We we, we start the season and we're looking for silver. We're looking to win the league. That's, that's a bit of bad and all it has been from from the start when I've been a Ponty, and then all is end to go on and, and win a cup. But um, yeah, we we got a lot of youngsters here, and um, they're all good enough. And but we got a couple of old heads as well, um, who who steal the ship for us. But we definitely got to be looking for silver. We're um, on a day we can beat we can beat anyone. And towards the end of last season, um, we started to hit a bit of form, um, beat them with in our last game, and before we have a nice run run in, but it wasn't to be. But yeah, there's a couple of youngsters coming through now, and hopefully they mature now in the last last season. And they've gone away, worked really hard, got fit, and a lot of them got got a bit bigger, and then just takes us forward, and we can challenge for something. You won uh, four league titles on a bounce with Ponty, and you also captained them to the latest one. Uh, like, how special were these few years for you, and which was a standout one? Yeah, it's, it's mad, really, because you don't realise how good how good it is till it's gone. So, like, you just take it for granted, and I think we did. We we were so successful for those four four years, and um, getting to every cup final, every league final, and just took, probably took it a bit for granted. Really, you didn't really take it all in, and. It was amazing. It was an amazing time. The squad we had was unbelievable. We had like probably 30, 35 players who, who could be picking the 15 every week. Um, and it was brilliant. Like, But probably probably the best one was um, probably the first uh, uh, the first one we won, the first league title we ever won. Um, that was probably the best because we hadn't done it. Uh, and it'd been a few years. And yeah, it was just an amazing, amazing moment. We, we lost a couple as well, which we should have won, but we, we, we'd done well for those four or five years. We were really successful and um, looking back, you know, it was just great times. Uh, yeah, you also had a two-year spell with Neath between 2007 and 2009. What was that like? Yeah, I really enjoyed my time in Neath. Um, just really unlucky. Picked, picked, up, um, picked up a groin injury in the first pre-season and um, ended up having about two or three operations on it. Try and fix it, and she just couldn't, she just couldn't, couldn't stay fit down there. Um, just wasn't meant to be. But loved my time down there, and a lot, of, a lot of people said, "Oh, you went down there for money." But at least at the time, with how many people you know, went full time, a lot of the boys went full time. So I got tucked down there, full time rugby player, and it, it was great. Like just, just couldn't stay fit, and I come back after my groin injuries, and I think I just skated my thumb. I was out. But um, when I played, it was brilliant. Like we, another team, cracking team. We won a double first year. And um, 
really enjoyed it. Fans, Zachy, like Ponty. We were having, having a good crowd, great club. It was a great team. It's just, it just wasn't meant to be for me. It's just, it just just couldn't, couldn't stay fit. And that, that was a downfall in the end. And that's when I ended up going back to Ponty. You also represented the Barbados. Wow. What did that mean for you to represent such a historic club and what was the culture like there in the, the week? Yeah, it was brilliant. It was um, a bit of a shock when I had a call. But um, I was just starting to really, like, really talk in the moment because I knew it, it, it'd be a one-off and uh, just made sure I enjoy, enjoyed every bit of it. And when you go away and you meet some of the boys I hadn't met before and it was just, just brilliant. Like, as you said, it's a bit big thing with the culture with the Barbados on a few pints and that was just right up my street and uh, <laughs> yeah I just really enjoyed it I was lucky I got to play with a couple of boys I know like Johnny Eds and uh, Gazi Davis and stuff like that so yeah we actually won we beat the army on, on the wreck and um, had, a, had a few pints late afterwards and had a really good night and um, my family came up again and yeah it was, it was just a, a, a lovely day and um, so I can always look back on and be proud of and uh, obviously, you played in the Prem for a long time. And who are some be- some of the best players you played with and against in the league? Um, oh, so many. Yeah, uh, probably when I first come on the scene, um, probably had the, like John Davis was just just breaking on the scene. He was a right down for when he when he first came on the scene. Uh, Scott Williams, David Dewitt was was a cracking player to play against. Um, probably. Uh, um, I don't think they'll no. Jimmy Roberts was probably the toughest 12 I played against um, a couple of years ago he was um, he, he was just just a great down for all game just don't stop running you just it's a whole breather and then you, you've got your boys more more recently you know you got Johnny Lewis I think you had he was at the interview because he scored like I mean Johnny always going well crack in respect but crack in player like he's again a right down for to play against and Done really well for Nestle, and then you are Aaron Pinchers, cracking players as well, playing really well for Merthyr at the moment. So, those players, cracking boys, like and um, just cracking players, really. It's just tough um, boys to play with. Yeah, played with some crack. There's probably, probably there's only one who will ever be my favourite, probably player to play with, and I would probably Gavin Dacey. Um, one, one of my best mates off the pitch, and I think we played over 200 games together for, for Ponty, and um. Yeah, it was just that was through the successful era as well when we had those four or five years. Just, just played really well together. Just, just come off each other and he read my game well and I could read this game and it's just done really well together. And um, yeah, he's probably probably the favourite probably favourite centre I've ever played with. Yeah, obviously with Pony, you've done well in the league and you've played in the British and Irish Cup. So, what's the best away trip you've been on with Ponty? Best away trip. Oh, there's some crap or oh, the uh, nights out or actual actual oh. games. But <laughs> um yeah, we had was a crack one. We had to, one of the first well probably one of the best ones we had was we beat Doncaster away. That was early on in the British Cup. I think it was the first year we ever went in there. Um I like most of the Welsh clubs we, we would no one would, would think we was gonna compete or anything and we actually went up to Doncaster and, and turned them over on their own ground. And um, they had a really good team at the, mo- at the, at the time. Lynn, I was coaching them. And um, they were a big team. And we, we managed to go up and turn them over. And again, I had a crack and I doubt the bear. Um, probably the stand-up one is when we went up to the Cornish Pirates. Uh, Caught the final of the British Cup. Again, no one gave us a chance to win in. Stinking day up there. Well, it was terrible. The pitch was terrible. Uh, massive crowd. Ponty took a massive following up with us. And again, we, we managed to turn them over. And... Um, they, they're the big standout ones. Um, Leinster, we lost the semi-finals. Uh, semi-finals, the cup. We actually drew the game. I went on. I tried. Uh, that was a full house in Sardis. That, that was a ma- massive one. Brilliant, brilliant day for everyone. And boys, they got into lose. But again, some of the players they had, Leinster had, went on. And they won Irish caps. And how many was in the team? There's probably about five or six of them. And so we done really well that day. But more of so the trips with Ponty were... We really enjoyed and it's something we missed now. Um, going away with the fans and, and making the most of it. But um, yeah, the British Cup was cracking memory. So we, had some, we had some big scouts we turned some big teams over in that. Obviously, you've already spoke about your league titles, but is there anything else, any other games in the Premiership that stick out for you? 
Um, I think begins. I'm not really one for uh, not really one for looking back over games like that, but so it's just the league titles really. Um, beating beating Clashley home in one of the league titles was a big one. Um, I just remember one of the they put out the team um, with Liam Williams and uh, oh, it was just so many Scarlet boys put in there. I think Jake Ball was in there. It was it was just full of Scarlets and again we. We thought, oh, here we go, is, is another one we're going to lose. And I think we got 40, 40 points on that. Um, just everything clicked for us our day. So that was a, that was a massive one. Um, but more, most of the time, I, I don't really look back on a lot of games. It's just um, to look forward, really. It, it, obviously, the finals and the cup finals are the standouts, but just, no, I just look forward and look back. Yeah. The derby games against Cardiff and Merthyr, they probably always stand out, don't they? Yeah, Christmas time when we used to play Cardiff uh, years ago, we used to always be on a Boxing Day, which 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 is good. Big crowds, um, tight games like Cardiff Ponty always just it was never much in it. Um, it's changed these days now. It's changed. We, we play them all sorts of times, but it's still massive games, big crowds. And Merthyr like the big big team on the scene now, and they've got all the big players and all the money, and. Um, the rivalry seat have gone that way now, but on Cardiff up, up, up in Merthyr. So, yeah, we have some big games and we've got a lot of friends up in Merthyr. A lot of boys who play for Ponty have gone up to Merthyr now. And so, that always makes it a bit more interesting. So, yeah, but yeah, massive game. But to be fair, most games in the Premiership now are big. You have no teams you can walk over, they're all big clubs. and You've got to fight for everything in the Premiership. Um, Dale, you played obviously in Ponty now. You have a lot of regional youngsters playing for you. How much does the Prem help develop these players? Yeah, it's massive. Um, I think the Prem is a bit of a scapegoat, really, sometimes over the years. For if the international teams not doing well, or the regionals are not doing well, or producing the players, I think they always look back. The Premiership's not doing it, but if you look back of when we were successful in some Six Nations, some of the, the boys who come through the Premiership, like Alan Wynn has always been classed as one of the best ever Welsh Welsh players. Um, like he was with Swansea and he wasn't here long, but he still come through those routes and played with Swansea. Jamie Roberts, Scott Williams, Jonathan Davis, Morgan Stannard, all all come through regional uh, come through regional from the local clubs through Ponty, Cardiff, Clashley. So it's massive, like so I just think you need I just think you need to give Give the Premiership a bit more funding, like, and I don't mean pay and players. I just mean facilities and maybe boys being able to have an extra day off work to train in a night, or going from training twice a week to three times a week. Just, just little stuff like that. It just needs more funding for facilities and training, just for people and that's what the youngsters are. And then it will more players will be will come from the clubs and, and be better players, but. At the moment, it's just done, and they're not giving a lot to Premiership, but they're expecting a lot out of it, and it's just not giving in. So, I just think the Premiership has been a bit of a scape, scapegoat, really, over the years. But the players that you take a look at themselves, the Cardiff Blues, at the moment, they're like Dylan Lewis, Liam Belcher, you've got Christian Dacey, uh, Jared Evans, Tom Williams, Alan Semrill, all played for Ponty three, four years ago. So, how they say it's not working, I don't know. Uh, do you think the regional youngsters are better off playing in like a regional A team, or do you reckon playing in the Premiership is better for their development? Oh, definitely a Premiership. Um, I think when they when they changed it from the clubs to the regional, you could just look at the results. Some of the results were coming in, like the regional A teams were getting back, and probably not fair on some of them. They're going up to some of these top teams, and these teams in Championship are full time, and the big big teams, big men playing for them, and. I just think you need to be uh, probably a bit of a balance. I think you've got a bit of a balance with like older players and boys who've been about. So definitely it was better with the clubs. Definitely you could see by the results and everything. Um, and I think the boys would say the same if you spoke to a lot of the boys um, who who been playing regional A and who was playing for the local, who played for the clubs in in the BNI. I think they, a lot of them would say the clubs. So, I don't think it worked. They went regional route and I, I just don't think that's worked at all with the regional league teams. And as someone that plays in the Welsh Premiership, obviously you mentioned it, it, it does get a lot of stick, but what do you feel the standards like and how do you feel the standards changed in the last 10 years? So? Um, it, it has changed. The games, the games are definitely a lot quicker in the Premiership now than they were. Um, I don't think they're as physical as they were. 
Um, but I'll, a lot of a lot of lads will probably do the pitches we got now. Um, a lot of the pitches have been changed to 4G, so the games are so fast. Um, uh, you don't got your cross keys any better us in the league anymore, which like mud baths. But at the end of the day, like if you want to win titles and stuff, that's where you have to go and you, you have to dig it out and work hard. And that's where a lot of players you could see where not really if, if you go across again and, and do your job. That's where a lot of players come from. But um, I just think it's just it's not as physical as it was, but it's definitely the pace is definitely rising. It's, it hasn't got worse. And uh, you represented Wales at age grade levels, and you played with the likes of uh, Alan Wynn. What was this experience like? Yeah, good. Um, you you could know from a from a young age that Alan Wynn was 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 going to do well in rugby and make it, and um, he, and he has like you know I didn't think he'd going to play under forty or games for Wales, but um, to be fair, the block he's he's a machine like to keep going playing at national level at his at his age now and the way he plays done so well like but. Yeah, it was, really, it was good. Like a lot of the boys played with, like Jamie Roberts, um, and all the boys who gone on, like we said, Alan Wynn. So many of them went on, and Chris Check, I went on and done well for Wales. So yeah, it was really good. And um, I got my cap to all up my wall. My son puts it in his bedroom, and it's just nice things to look back on now and again. Yeah, you played two Junior World Cups out in Argentina and France. What was that experience like? Yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, from I wasn't full time playing then, I was just working and um, playing for Ponty. So it, it was nice to get be in that environment for three weeks, um, training every day, just eating tidy and being with the boys every day and playing. So, but I was, I was, I was really lucky to, to go on those two trips because um, the Six Nations squads I wasn't actually picked for. Um, I think it was like your, your Darby Witts, your Tom Riley's, and people that were picked. But then when it came to the World Cup, they had been. Stay home to, to, to go to the first team with the Blues and whatever regions there was. So it was a bit of luck, really, that they got pulled out of the squad and it gave me my chance to go away. And when you were coming through as well, you had a, a spell in the Celtic Warriors Academy. How was that for you? And were you disappointed with the way things happened with the Celtic Warriors? Yeah, it was a real shame. We, 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 again, we had, a, we had a cracking team. I think we went and beaten all year. And... Um, it was, it was looking good for, for the region at the time and the boys were was, was signing new contracts to stay another year and two and it was all looking good and then it just went, it just went Pete Tong so quick and uh, like I said a lot of boys who, who was in the academy with me went straight to work again and a lot of them I don't think I'd, I'd seen again playing rugby or they might have gone and played for the local clubs but never at a higher level which is sad really but um, yeah, we, we finished off. We finished off that year because it was a big tour. Justin Manel and I booked the big tour to South Africa. So we went and toured South Africa for two weeks. So it was a nice bit of closure with it with a tour out there. But um, definitely sad times to see some boys finish for there and then never really come back playing and I level again. Obviously, due to COVID now, you haven't played a game in you know quite a long time. What's that break been like for your mental health? Yeah, it's been... Um, it has been good to be fair. I am um, really busy when when the rugby's back playing. Um, my day is I get up early, go to the gym. I'm in the gym by like six o'clock in the morning. I'm going straight to work, full day's work, coming home. And then I've either got my kids then after after work or I'm going back out working or back out training. So I don't get a minute to myself really. Like, But since this has come in with the rugby, you're not on the edge. It's been nice to come home, just chill out a bit. And um, it's been really good. Um, the body, everyone keeps saying to me, oh, your body uh, should feel a lot better now because you've had a break. But to be honest, I, I feel a bit worse. I just think your body gets used to used to playing and training. And I, I think when you stop, it's that, it's that, oh, when you're a bit older, you start to seize up a bit. So I think I feel a bit worse after the break my body, but I'm sure I can get back into it quick enough. But for my mental health, it's, it's, definitely, been, it's definitely been a good thing um, just to chill out a bit and just not being 100% all the time. Just give me more time to spend with the kids. And so it's been a good thing, really. Obviously, Ponty's a club which is really in touch with the community as well. And what's it meant to, for the community and Ponty to, to not have the rugby club to go to on, on you know, on your Saturday and, and go and watch the club? Is it? It's quite quite sad, really, isn't it? Yeah, I, I can imagine a lot of people are struggling with mental health. And, just imagine on a Saturday, that's a bit of a getaway. 
to get out to the house and, and get a bit of fresh air and come down and enjoy the rugby just that couple of hours out to the house is probably massive to a lot of people and um, yeah it is sad and I just hope I just hope everyone's alright um, especially the older people who, a lot of them were stuck indoors because um, a lot of Ponty supporters are a lot older um, I just hope they're all doing well and staying safe but I just think as soon as we get back now to rugby um, the better it's just just be good for everyone really and probably everyone in Wales really youngsters older people just getting back to normal that was a massive thing like. we got um, a teammates quiz for you right yeah so no problem worst dress teammate you've seen Alex Webber <laughs> what sort of stuff is... <laughs> thinks he's taught that mind but his dress sense is absolutely awful what sort of stuff does he come out with <laughs> oh, he, he's, he's got these tight leggings he likes to wear like skin with, an, with like flip flops and then he wear the tightest top ever probably like an extra small probably fits a 14 year old but he thinks he looks good in it anyway uh, who's the best drinker you've seen oh I'm the best drinker <laughs> no actually, the best drinker I've seen has got to be Dale McIntosh absolutely machine on a, on a thing and, and Justin Berling far behind him I think the Chiefs been brought up a few times Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, it's ridiculous. Anyway, you, we used to be after the game, we wouldn't want to go nowhere near him in the bar because once, once you're in a round, once you've had him, you've either bought him a pint or he buys you a pint, you're in a round for the night then. It's not funny, so you try to stay, just try to stay well away from him when he goes to the bar so you don't get stuck with him for the night. And uh, who's the best changing room DJ you've had a Ponty? Best changing room DJ? Hmm. Craig Lock probably Tubbs went bad on the on the thing, but a mixer used to mix it up quite a bit. So his phone used to go on a lot. And again, Weber Weber's phone's on it quite a lot at the moment, but he's into all that like R and B uh, and it's not my scene. So all that nonsense. So I like a bit of dance and something a bit the quicker than that. So yeah, probably Craig Lock was the best DJ we've had. And uh, without revealing too much, who's the biggest liability on a night out? Biggest liability. Mm, I don't think no. Darren Waters probably is the biggest liability I've ever been with in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely off, clean off it. Um, but at the moment in a Ponty squad, I would probably say Johan Evans probably, one of the youngsters. <laughs> he's, uh, he's a bit wild on a night out. And uh, if you were stuck on a desert island, who's the teammate you'd most want to be with and the one you'd least like to be with? Um, least would be Reece Shellard. Because that's all we do is argue. We just constantly argue all the time. Um, and who do you want to be with? What, current current squad member or? or any, of the, any of the players you played with? The players. Uh, probably have to say Craig Lock. Probably Tubbs is uh, one of my best mates, so we got all right. But just keeping away from Shellard. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's a wrap for this episode. Cheers for coming on. Uh, remember to go follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Welsh Prem Pod, and watch the rest of the videos and like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you and goodbye.